good to go? Yeah. Okay. So, it's pretty obvious why I'm here. You guys obviously want me to talk about what happened September 10 between me and Mark and Alexander Palace, right? I mean, we're obviously not here to talk about me. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, that's the point of this, this whole thing. Just to find that out. Yeah. Why, Eddie, why? It's all over social media. It's all I get on my Twitter feed. People in tears. The day the music died, you ruined wrestling. You fucking idiots. Everyone wants to know why. But what I don't understand is, if you've been watching progress since day one, if these people on social media have been watching progress since day one, it's pretty fucking obvious why. It's staring, it's, it's right in your face. In my eyes, it couldn't be more clear why. If you can't tell why I did what I did on the day that I did, then you have no business being in that audience. Alexandra Palace, 2,000 people, September 10th. It's got to be about two months since I made the groundbreaking decision. Made headwaves across the UK, front pages of newspapers in South Wales. Head teacher quits his job to pursue professional wrestling. And there I am, two months in, wrestling in front of 2,000 people. In Alexandra Palace. And not just wrestling, it's the penultimate match. It's for the number one contendership for the Progress title. And I get to roll with my best bud. So we arrive and we're told, you know, it's, it's, it's an eight-man scramble. That's a lot of entrances. That's going to take up a lot of time. You guys are going to enter together. You know, cut down on entrance time. Great. I mean, if Eddie Dennis and Mark Andrews enter together... Everyone knows what song they want to hear, right? But Universal aren't going to allow that, so... <sighs> and what do we do? Well, well, we use Mark's music, obviously. He's in the fucking WWE. He's like the big star, right? So obviously, we come down to Mark's music and... The bell hasn't even rung on the biggest match of my life. And I've already been portrayed like a valet. I'm already an afterthought and the match hasn't even started. Let's look past that. Let's talk about the match. A double stop next stop driver leaves James Drake dead to rights. And this is the bit that really hurts. You look me in the eye and you say to me, Eddie, you take the fall. You deserve it. 
I don't need your charity. I didn't need your help in the 11 months that you were away in TNA. And I didn't need your help to win this match. And the irony of the whole thing is it took him about 90 seconds to change his mind. Hits a shooting star press, pins Flash Morgan Webster, and takes away the victory he'd so graciously gifted me a minute earlier. Understand this, Mark. I could deal with your selfishness when this was just something we did for fun on the weekends. I guess I always knew that you took your own successes over mine. But I'd look past it now. Nah, Mark's a good dude. Mark's got my best interests at heart. But this isn't a joke for me anymore. You may have a guaranteed down payment. I don't have anything. Victory in Alexandra Palace secured my place at the next 5, 10, 15 chapters. Victory at Alexandra Palace was a big part in securing my financial stability over the coming 12 months. And the kicker, what really hurts Mark, is that you of all people knew that. You offered me my dreams on a silver platter. And then you took them before I could take a single bite. That's what happened on September 10th in Alexandra Palace. Are we done? Yeah. Um, is there any? Is that it? Is there any more? I thought I just thought we were gonna get a little bit more. What do you mean? It is can't just have been about that one night. I feel like it was. There was more. Just give me. Well, you want to know everything? Uh, yeah. If you've got time, you've got time. If you want to. I've got. I've got an. You want to know everything? Let's start at chapter six.